Hey everyone, so 3.13 is still in PTU, but we actually got another couple of versions of the patch over the past week. Neither of these smaller patches really had any major changes, but they contained some bug fixes and a few small feature changes, so today I wanted to take a look at some of these things, and also look at some of the stuff that I didn't get a chance to look at in the last video. Also, I'm just going to share my opinion about whether or not this patch should or will go live soon, since we are technically past the deadline for the first patch of the year, which is usually Q1. Before we start though, if you end up enjoying this video, or if it helps you, please leave a like or subscribe, and I really appreciate all of you who do. Okay, so the first thing you're probably wondering is how I got into the station docking tunnel here, and it's actually pretty simple to do it. The exterior door on these tubes actually just works like most doors on ships, and I was surprised to see that the interior one that leads into the station also works the same way. So if you shoot doors on ships, or also these doors, they'll open up and allow you to have access, because there's currently no system in place to use a cutting tool to do that job. It was a little bit of a pain to line up the gladius at this close of a range to shoot directly at the doors, but once you get it lined up it only takes a few shots to blow them open. At the moment, you don't even get a crime stat for doing this, which is pretty funny. I guess you could get unlucky and shoot an NPC who's hanging out in the docking area and that would give you a crime stat, but that seems pretty unlikely to me. But yeah, just be careful if you're trying this yourself. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that I could get in here, and I guess that's just a little sneak peek at what the inside area of these tubes will look like when this feature goes online, hopefully in a month or so. I'm really looking forward to seeing it, especially now that I've gotten the chance to see the view from inside this more finished tunnel. Even seeing those early models on Inside Star Citizen made me really excited for this feature, but with a more complete tunnel I'm even more excited. Speaking of the Gladius though, they've made a few more changes to it in 3.13. None of these changes should really affect how it functions at the moment, but they've called this iteration the Gold Standard, which means that it should have everything in place as more systems come online, and it should be compatible with all of them. So you can see here just a few of the mini axis hatches that now open and close all around the Gladius, which cover things like the components, a weapons rack, a fueling port, and more. And these are all going to be used as we switch over to a physicalized component system, and eventually have more physical processes in game, like refueling I guess will eventually require you to connect something to your ship. So the Gladius is always one of the first ships to get new things like this, because it's going to be one of the main ships that you use during Squadron 42, so they really want it to be polished. So yeah, it's just one of the perks of being a Gladius owner, is your ship is really focused on by CIG. But yeah, if you have a Gladius, you might want to spend some time looking around at all of these component bays. They look really cool for now, and there's some cool stuff hidden around this ship, and maybe sometime in the future you'll be happy to know where things are when you're doing repairs on your ship. I also wanted to take a look at the new pushable trolleys really quickly, since even though they're not really useful for anything at the moment, this gameplay of pushing and pulling things around will be useful in the future for unloading and loading cargo and whatever else CIG decides to use it for. Unfortunately, it seems like they're having some issues in this first implementation, mainly relating to the performance issues that these carts can cause if they start interacting with things unpredictably. Thankfully though, I think there's a physics refactor coming later this year, because at the moment these carts don't seem to be working all that well. First of all, even on this hangar floor, which seems pretty flat from what I can see, I was getting some very strange behavior where the cart would look like it was catching on something, but there's really nothing there, at least visually. They also are just generally hard to control, although that kind of makes sense with how big this one is. But yeah, in my opinion, I think they should consider leaving this out when the patch goes live. Since these carts seem to cause a lot of performance issues, they don't currently have any utility, and it seems like they can cause client crashes as well, because my game crashed a couple of times when I was just pushing them around. I didn't even get them stuck. And yeah, I don't even want to know what happens if you put these in the middle of the pad in the hangar while a ship is spawning. I'm sure something bad would happen. One small glitch that I was surprised to see that made it into this patch is the mounted turrets still don't shoot, at least in the case of this one at Reclamation and Disposal on Hurston. If you saw my last video about delivery missions, I included a little clip of me messing around with this same turret near the end of the video, which was on the original patch that went to PTU, and there were all sorts of issues with that one, from it not shooting to me not really being able to let go of the turret. Now at least letting go of it seems to work as intended, and I was able to do it by interacting or by jumping as I did in the last video, but I still can't shoot it, and that kind of is important for a mounted turret. It isn't that big of a deal though that it's not working, because at the moment there isn't much use for these turrets anyway. This one here might actually have a chance of getting used, since reclamation and disposal here can be pretty busy if selling illegal vice is profitable in the current patch, but we'll have to see how that goes depending on how trading is. 
It's still a pretty small caliber turret from the looks of it though, so I probably wouldn't hop on this thing to fight someone in a ship. I don't think that would end too well for you against any sort of decent pilot. Overall though, these turrets aren't that useful for now, but I do look forward to the day when they are useful, because the ground combat in Star Citizen is just so unexplored at the moment, and I think it could be really fun. Now speaking of trade, in my time reading through some forum posts and stuff I heard, it seems like so far it's improved over 3.12. Now, that isn't really saying much, but I'll take anything at this point, because you really couldn't trade at all in 3.12. So just to get a feel for how it is, I decided to do a pretty standard run from Bezdek on Ariel to the Central Business District in Lorville. This isn't always the best run because it's very popular, and that means it's usually being done by a lot of other traders which keeps your margins lower than they might otherwise be, or it's heavily camped by pirates, or sometimes both. However, it does serve as a pretty good indicator of how supply levels are going to be for commodities across the verse, since CIG seems to balance the availability of everything together for the time being. So you got a couple of commodities here that can help you gauge how availability is across the verse. You've got titanium, which should really never be out of stock even for a caterpillar sized load, but if it is, you know things are pretty bad. It was often out of stock in 3.12 just to give you an idea of how bad it is in the current patch if you were lucky enough to not attempt to trade over the past few months. However, in 3.13 at the moment, there seems to be plenty of titanium, and the indicator of having a large amounts of everything, which is Laronite, was also readily available. You can see here that I was able to get just under 200 SCU of Laronite for this run, which is pretty good, and I was able to fill up the rest of my cargo hold with titanium. If this sort of availability continues into live, I'll definitely be satisfied. So after taking that back over to Lorville, I was also happy to not run into any issues with selling, which you would sometimes have had problems with even in large landing zones like this back in 3.12. The prices I had for buying and selling on this run weren't as good as they possibly could have been, but they weren't bad either, and I'm happy with the availability. I really hope that this is representative of what the availability will be like when the patch goes live because this is plenty to do some reasonable trading, but there's a chance that the current availability seems higher than it will be when it goes live because people just aren't spending that much time trading during the PTU. But yeah, I really hope that trading is somewhat viable in this patch because if it is, then we'll actually be able to do some trading in the Starlifters when they're finally released and that'll be a fun time. One smaller change that could make a big difference, and this came in the most recent PTU patch, is the removal of the no-fire zone around Port Olazar. So Port Olazar was the last station where the armistice zone around the station actually disabled your ship weapons from firing, so you couldn't fire them at all if you were close enough to the station, but at least for this PTU patch, that's been removed. So currently in the PTU, this has made Port Olazar very chaotic, and if someone's trying to lock down the station right now, it's pretty easy for them to stop anyone from spawning ships and leaving for people who are currently inside of the station. Now this also does make it easier as a bounty hunter to come in and hunt down the person who's doing this because they can't really hide in the armistice zone around the station, but it's definitely going to be chaotic around Port Olazar if this stays in. So I am hoping that the violence does go down a little bit once we get to the live version, but yeah, unless they really up the accuracy of the station turrets and make Crusader security a lot more powerful, Port Olazar is going to be a pretty dangerous place in 3.13, so just be aware of that if this change is still in. Another small change I wanted to briefly mention is some changes were made to help snub fighters and constellations work a bit more smoothly together. So I had mentioned in my last video that when you had to claim your Connie for whatever reason, once you retrieved it again, there would be a chance that it would spawn without its snub fighter attached. Now you guys in the comments pointed out that as long as both ships were claimed on the vehicle retrieval terminal, they would usually spawn together, and it looks like CIG used that fact to implement their solution. So now if your Merlin or Archimedes gets removed from your constellation or destroyed in some way, and it has to be claimed, it looks like you have to claim the entire constellation just for doing that. Because as you can see here, I went and spawned my Andromeda over at Everest Harbor, and I only removed the Merlin from it, but then when I went back to the vehicle terminal, it looked like I only had the option to claim the constellation. I couldn't store it, even though it was still on the landing pad. So I think this is an okay fix for now, since there's very few times when your snub would get destroyed and the main constellation wouldn't, and hopefully this will save some people some headache, and you can still even pull out the Merlins by themselves if you really want to to load it into a different ship like a Carrick or something. So personally I think this change will help me, since I think that any time that I'd be claiming the Merlin or Archimedes, I'd be claiming the entire constellation setup, and hopefully it's not too much of an annoyance to any of you guys either. If it is though, it seems like this is their temporary solution, 
resolution, so hopefully it'll go back to the way it was before in the future, but with more consistent functionality. In this case though, I'll take the increased reliability for now over having that feature that I'd probably never use. Plus, if you really need another Merlin to just mess around with so you don't have to worry about claiming your constellation, there are only 135,000 credits to pick up in-game. Now for the last part of this video, I just want to talk about the general stability of this patch. As you can probably guess, because it's still in P2, it's quite bad for now, and I'd actually say it's probably one of the worst patches that I remember playing. Now this can vary from person to person, so let me know how it's been for you if you've been playing it in the comments down below. So yeah, I've only played these two most recent patches for a couple of hours, but I still managed to encounter multiple 30Ks during that time, and I also ran into a lot of game client crashes, which I hardly ever get. Now this could be just me on the client crashes, so I do want to hear from you guys if you've been running into client crashes as well, but I know everyone else was getting 30Ks at least, because global chat was pretty much only talking about that. So yeah, as much as I want to get started with the new reputation system, and also to have access to the constellations with their snubcrafts working, I'm glad that they've delayed the current iteration of this patch, because at the moment it's pretty rough. Hopefully it's something silly causing these issues, like the carts that I was talking about earlier, so that we don't have to wait too much longer for it to go live, but I wouldn't expect that to happen until late next week at the earliest, just based on how it is right now. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. I would say go check out the PTU and have some fun yourself, but it is pretty rough right now, so just be ready for some 30Ks and crashes at the moment if you decide to do so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.